So try Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream. See if you don't say it's smooth. So smooth. It's slick. So slick. It's a smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. And now this is Jeffrey Barnes returning you to Act Two of Now You See Her, Now You Don't. You see, Max, the whole plot to cover Janice Vickers' disappearance was now quite apparent to me. For some reason, the employees of the hotel were trying to make it seem that she'd never been there. Why, the dirty crooks. The register had been altered. The waiter, the clerk, the bellboy, the manager were all lying about not having seen her. The doctor was trying to convince Elaine that she was suffering from hallucinations about her sister. Hallucinations? In short, Max, there was a conspiracy to make it appear that Janice Vickers had never been at the Coves. Hmm. Well, it was up to me to discover the reason for that conspiracy. Now, Elaine, you've got to help me. I can put together all the pieces of this puzzle except one. And that is, who would want to, well, let's say, abduct your sister? Has she been in any trouble? Uh, Yes, Mr. King. What was it? I hate to tell you this, but you see, Janice is different from me. She's a year older and she's more sophisticated. And in New York, she runs around with a faster crowd. Uh Uh-huh. Anyway, a, a little while ago, Janice started gambling. Oh, I see. She ran up some debts at the place where she played. Pretty soon they amounted to $25,000. 25000 oh, I, I know that's a lot of money, Mr. King. We've always been spoiled. We've lived from a trust fund, and, well, Mother has a good deal of money. Did Janice ask your mother to pay? Oh, no. You see, Mother hasn't been well recently, and Janice didn't want to worry her. So you decided to run away? That's right. And you came here to the coves? Yes. We thought if we stayed away from New York for a while... What was the name of the gambler to whom Janice lost all that money? Uh, I I don't remember exactly. Uh It was Monty something. Not Monty Baxter? Yes, that's it, Monty Baxter. Good Lord, do you know what you've done? No, did we do something wrong? Well, you couldn't have walked into a prettier trap if you tried. You know that gambling casino right down on the point? Yes. Monty Baxter owns that. What? And I've heard that he owns this hotel as well. He owns this hotel? Sure, that's why the hotel employees are lying. Monty Baxter simply had to order them to. Oh, this is a pure case of, of, won't you come into my parlor, said the spider to the fly. We'd better call the sheriff. Oh, he wouldn't know how to handle this. I'll take care of this from now on. You, but you hardly know us. You can't... Now, look, you both strike me as pretty swell girls. Let's leave it at that, huh? I'll be back just as soon as I've settled things with Monty Baxter. I drove down to the point and went into the Blue Horseshoe, Monty Baxter's place. It was beginning to fill up with the evening's crowd. I walked past the wheels and the tables to the rear where Baxter had his office. Hey, you, you can't go in there. Oh, can't I? Just try to stop me. Yeah, that might be a pleasure, mister. Just take your clumsy paw off me. Yeah. You won't? Very well, then. <laughs> oh. Say, what the... Oh, it's you, Mr. King. Come right in. Just what I intend doing. Well, have a seat. Haven't seen you for a long time. How have you been, Mr. King? I want to talk to you, Baxter. Why, sure. What do you want? That guy, he can't... Go on, beat it. Wait outside. Yeah, but he... You heard me. Shut the door. That's the trouble with being in my line, Mr. King. You, you got to associate with the wrong kind of people. I think we've had enough of this small talk, Baxter. Oh, yeah? Something on your mind, Mr. King? Plenty, Baxter. What's happened to Janice Vickers? Janice Vickers. Never heard of her. Since when do you forget people who owe you $25,000? Oh, I don't forget them. Everybody knows that. Well, then don't try to pull that old line about not knowing Janice Vickers. I want her back, and that means right now. Uh, what's this thing to you, anyway? She's nothing personal to me. This well, is then a... what are you sticking your neck out for? Keep your nose clean, Mr. King. That's my recipe for good health. Don't threaten me, Baxter. That won't do you a bit of good. I can always go to the police, you know. I thought you were an okay guy. You better get out of here before I get sore about this, Al. Yeah, you want me, boss? Mr. King is persona non grata right now. Yeah? Yeah. Show him out. A pleasure, boss. A real pleasure. Come on, bub. Uh. Uh. Uh, 
been looking you over. Say, you don't seem to have much of a muscle. How come you could hit me so hard? It's a matter of leverage. Leverage? Certainly. You brace yourself like this. Yeah. Balance evenly. Yeah, and then? And then? This! Oh, Oh, Mr. King, I was beginning to get worried about you. Your your hand? What happened? Oh, it's nothing. I I bumped into something. Baxter, did you see him? Yes, he's behind this, all right. What are you going to do? I think I'd better call a friend of mine back in New York. He's on the force, but he's pretty efficient. You can use the phone here, right by my bed. Oh, no, no. You'd better try to get some sleep now. I'll call from the next room. Mr. King, uh, I can't go on calling you that. Of course not. And I don't like Elwood. Oh? Uh, Can't I call you Bill? (laughs) Of course, Elaine, but why Bill? I I just like it. (laughs) Good night, Bill. Good night, Elaine. Oh, and and don't worry. I'll sit up in the connecting room all night. Hello? This is Janice. I don't have any time, so listen carefully. I must have the $25,000 tomorrow or else... Hello, Janice. Who is this? This is Elwood King. Oh. Janice. Janice. Hello. You don't have to flash me, sir. I'm right here. Operator, I want you to trace that incoming call for this room. I'm sorry, sir. There was no incoming call on your line. But I just spoke to someone. There was no incoming call to 316, sir. Oh, lying, of course. Elaine, Elaine, wake up. Uh, You'd better get up now. What? Oh, Oh, you gave me a start. The sun, what time is it? It's ten in the morning. You've been sleeping almost twelve hours. So late? Uh Uh-huh. Janice. What about Janice? She called last night. Then she's all right? She will be. I went to the bank this morning. They know me here. They advanced me $25,000. You... You mean you have it with you? Uh Uh-huh. Right here in this briefcase. What's that? Oh, I sent for breakfast. Come in. Pardon? Breakfast for free, Jim, monsieur? Yes. Orange juice, scrambled eggs, and coffee. Orange juice? I asked for tomato juice. I have it here on the order as orange juice, monsieur. Oh, well, all right. Just just set it down on this night table. Uh, Thank you. Here. Merci, monsieur. Now... I don't know if I have an appetite. Oh, of course you do. Well, maybe. Bill, would you get me my robe, please? It's right in the closet. Well, certainly. Uh, That's it, the blue one. Oh, yes, I've got it. There, I'll just slip it around your shoulders for you. Thanks. There we are. Well, here's to us. And Janice. Now, just don't you worry about her. Everything will be all right. I called Baxter this morning and told him I have the money. He didn't want to talk, but no. I... It... What's the matter? The juice. Elaine. There's something... It's been drugged. Elaine. I'm going to it. I can't breathe. Oh. Elaine. 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 To the phone. Can it? Oh. Elaine, what's happened? Where are you? Don't uh, try to move yet, Mr. King. Huh? You... The doctor. Yes, Mr. King. What did you expect? You... You drugged me. Oh, be ridiculous. I've just given you an injection. An injection? Of course. I thought it would be wisest in this case. Helene, where is she? You mean the young lady? Yes. Yeah, this room. Everything's messed up. Doors open. all be cleaned up soon, Mr. King. 
Nancy. Yes, to cover up clues. Well, you won't get away with this. Hey, what's that? A mess? A note. It's for you. Give it to me. Let's see what Monty Baxter has to say. Oh, dear Mr. King, thank you for your contribution of $25,000. My briefcase. The money, it's gone. Go ahead with the note. I'm interested. You should be. It says, I do appreciate what you tried to do for my sister, or rather my non-existent sister. What's this non-existent sister? Continue. I'm really intrigued. Oh, by now, I'm sure you realize you never saw my sister and me together. That would have been impossible since we are one and the same person. Signed, Elaine. A very clever young woman. Clever? I've been duped. And doped, Mr. King. Well, Max, that's the whole story, just as it happened. It would make a terrific picture, simply terrific. I don't know. We uh, might get away with it. Get away with it? We could make this an epic. It's box office, Max. It can't miss. Well, you might have something there. Sure. And yet, Bill, I... I uh... Bill, are you out on the terrace? Uh... I thought you'd be here. I want to show you the new hat I... Oh, hello. Hello. Uh, this is Max Conrad, dear. Max, this is my third cousin, Roseanne. Roseanne? And I suppose your name is Percy? Uh, what is this, uh, a gag? Uh, no, no, Rodin has a great sense of humor. <laughs> Haven't you, dear? It's a little too hot to have it working today, darling. What? Mr. Conrad, I'm Elaine King. Elaine? Uh, yes, Bill and I just got married two weeks ago in New England. Not at a place called the Coast? No. Why, yes. Uh, you mean... After all that, he married you? After all... Would you like a drink, dear? Wait, I get it. Bill, have you been telling that story again? Oh, Elaine. We dreamed it up the other night, Mr. Conrad, and he thinks it would make a great picture. Elaine. But I keep telling him it's too fantastic. Oh, fantastic. That's just what I said. Ah, now you've spoiled it. Just when I almost had him sold. Sold. (laughs) (laughs) Well, come on. Dinner ought to be ready. Say, uh, where's Janice, anyway? Isn't she here yet? I know. I was supposed to meet her at Barnwitz, and I waited for more than an hour. I called home, and her maid said she'd gone out, and I thought she'd be here by now. She hasn't been here, and she hasn't called. That's odd. That isn't at all like Janet. No, it isn't. You don't think anything could have happened to her? Do you? This is Jeffrey Barnes again, bringing down the final curtain on tonight's Mystery Theater production of Now You See Her, Now You Don't. Be with us next week to hear an unusual study in character by Joseph Ruscoe entitled Primer for Murder. The original music for the Mystery Theater is composed and conducted by Alexander Sandler. Clayton Collier and Marion Shockley were starred, and Arnold Moss, James Van Dyke, Gilbert Mack, and Peter Capel featured in tonight's story. Any resemblance between the names and characters used on Mystery Theater and any actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you can get a toothpaste that does what no other toothpaste can do. It's utterly new, radically different, incredibly better. Lion's Toothpaste. And evidence that it is better, far and away better, is found in thousands of exhaustive laboratory tests. These tests prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that new Lion's Toothpaste is better because they show that while cleaning teeth, it actually gets them brighter. Two and a half to five and a half times brighter than any other toothpaste. By making these tests on scores and scores of individual teeth and measuring their brightness with exacting accuracy on special electronic equipment, fair and impartial control was constantly maintained. And I repeat, they show that new Lion's toothpaste gets teeth two and a half to five and a half times brighter than any other toothpaste. Now this remarkable toothpaste, Lion's toothpaste, is not just another toothpaste, not just another old toothpaste with an added ingredient but is completely new and radically different in formula. New Lion's Toothpaste not only contains a new patented cleansing agent, but also a new and exclusive polishing agent that's so superior, no other toothpaste can match it. Hence, Lion's Toothpaste cleans beautifully, polishes brilliantly, and most amazing of all, it cleans without soap, polishes without chalk. There's nothing else like it anywhere. 
tonight or tomorrow, sure, buy this utterly new toothpaste that laboratory tests prove gets teeth two and a half to five and a half times brighter than any other. Lion's Toothpaste. And now this is Dan Seymour saying good night and inviting you to be with us next week at this same time when the Mystery Theater <laughs> presents Primer for Murder. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.